Hey, what's up guys? It's Hazard. I'm a fighter pilot. So this roller coaster is designed to kill people through G-force. So it's designed to kill terminally ill as well as people on death row. So being a fighter pilot, I've flown the F-16 as well as the F-35. Both of those are rated to nine Gs. Technically the Viper is rated to nine and a half Gs. So I have a lot of experience pulling Gs. Let's first look at how this roller coaster works from the designer. He does give off some serious James Bond supervillain vibes. It's a basically, it's a euthanasia machine in the form of roller coaster, engineered to humanely with euphoria and pleasure. The coaster features two key parts. One is a drop tower, and another part is a series of loop elements. You are towed up to the top of a drop tower. You fall down 500 meters, to achieve such a kinetic energy to ride all to, through the loops to be exposed for one minute under 10 g force your blood is rushed towards lower extremities so there is lack of blood in your brain so your brain starts to suffocate let's talk about g-forces so as fighter pilots we deal with a lot of g's a g is the number of times of gravity so right now if I step on a scale, I'll weigh 205 pounds with my gear on about 230. Now being in a normal roller coaster where it kind of pushes your head down, that's maybe three G's. If you're in a Formula One car, that's about five G's. We'll pull nine G's. So nine times the force of gravity, just crushing you into your seat over 2000 pounds of force. So we do a couple of things to be able to withstand those G's. One of those is to develop a good AGSM, anti-G straining maneuver. So that's where we squeeze our calves, thighs, butt, abs, two thirds of their breath, crisp air exchanges, squeezing that blood back into our brain. Because if you lose enough blood, you'll pass out. And if you pass out in a single seat fighter at the speeds we fly, you're gonna impact the ground in about 15 seconds. And it's gonna take about 30 seconds for you to fully wake back up. So unfortunately, we've lost a lot of pilots over the years to a G-lock, G-induced loss of consciousness. So that's why we do a lot in terms of the AGSM, They'll put us into a centrifuge where they spin us around up to nine Gs so that we can practice our AGSM. Here's actually a clip right here of me practicing back in 2011. Keep it in, on top, breathe. Drop the shoulders, legs tight. Stay on my count, breathe. Squeeze the legs, squeeze the butt, breathe. Keep that upper body relaxed, breathe. Squeeze the stomach, breathe. Breathe, terminate, terminate, let go of the stick, stay tight. We also do a lot with human performance. So we make sure that we work out a lot, particularly the lower body, as well as cardio to withstand the repeated 9G turns. We'll also make sure to stay hydrated. So just being 3% dehydrated can reduce your G tolerance time by 30%. It's also important to sleep well, to not have stressors in your life. So there's a lot of human performance element to being able to withstand these Gs. So let's first talk, could somebody who's terminally ill die from this roller coaster. So when you're in your prime, it takes a lot. And eventually by the time you're 80, 90 years old, or if you're terminally ill, just falling or getting a simple cold can kill you. So absolutely this roller coaster could kill some people out there. Let's talk about the average person. So the average person, I guarantee they're gonna pass out. So 10 Gs, you're gonna go to sleep. Now a G lock is different than death. So G lock is the lack of blood going to your brain. Technically, it's a lack of oxygen, and so you pass out. But it really takes about three to four minutes before your brain starts to suffer damage. So I used to do MMA, and people would get choked out all the time, which is similar to a G-lock, so that blood is not going to your brain, and they would pass out, they kind of do the funky chicken, wake back up, they'd be just fine. So you're really gonna have to sustain those Gs for greater than three to four minutes to start getting brain damage. And it's gonna take a lot longer to actually kill somebody. So this is, I think, myth busted. This roller coaster would not kill most people. And the designer's talking about using this for inmates. A lot of those people are in good shape. So they're gonna just wake up with a probably a slight headache and they're gonna be fine. All right, so lastly, let's talk about a fighter pilot. Could a fighter pilot stay awake the whole time? So 10 Gs is a lot. 10 Gs is more than we train to but I would say that most likely a fighter pilot would stay conscious the whole time. So I showed you the video of doing nine Gs with the old legacy G suit that provided about a G and a half of protection. Now we have to have a little bit of a buffer because 
if you're not sleeping well, if your legs are sore from working out, if you're a little bit dehydrated, it just takes one time to fall below nine Gs and you pull back on the stick up to nine Gs for you to pass out and potentially die. So we have to have a buffer in there. So I think if you're on top of your game, if you are in good shape, if you're hydrated, if you've slept well, if you've pulled G recently, which is an important part, then you could absolutely stay awake 10 Gs for 60 seconds. So let's do it. If somebody actually designs this thing and it's legit, so it's not just like a carnival ride or somebody designing it in their backyard, I would absolutely hop on the roller coaster and go through 10 Gs, 60 seconds. Let's do it. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like it, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll talk to you next time.